Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you've been having fun this morning so far. Um, I'm soon going to put a stop to that by talking about some rather more um, mundane stuff about what it actually means to study at the University of New South Wales, how you would go about getting a degree in maths and stats in particular. At least I will when my slides come up. Who was the IT people? Are they? They're on the clicker. All right, thank you. There you go. So that's. I think you're going for, most of you are going for a campus tour later on, and here you can see a picture of where the School of Mathematics and Statistics lives, the Red Center, uh, further up the mall. And um, that's our web uh, uh, side address, which you probably know anyway. Just put it up anyway, and that's my name as well. So just have a brief look at some of the things that we've got on our website just to point you, uh, you know, where to look. There's a nice section on here on, you know, uh, there's a section devoted to high school students. And here we have sort of explanation of why you would study maths and stats at uh, UNSW, what to do before you get here, which perhaps is a bit, um, a bit late for some of you, but it's worth a look anyway. And various resources that you can help, uh, help you, you know, get used to mathematics and see what's going on. We have a particular uh, site on our little magazine called Parabola, which I hope some of you have uh, come across, which is designed to write sort of little articles about mathematics and how mathematics is applied, aimed at high school students. So it should be something you should be able to um, get a lot out of. Particularly, I noticed an article here on applications of the Euler spiral map projection, which is a way of um, mapping the globe. As you might know, if you take a globe and you can't Get a, a, you can't get a perfect map of the globe without some sort of distortion. And that article, which I just had a look at this morning, looks very interesting on one way of doing that uh, in a way that's, that cuts down the amount of distortion and helps uh, compress meteorological data. Okay, uh, worth a look. But there's all sorts of other interesting um, articles in there. And historically, it goes right back to whenever we started running Parabola, which is 50-odd years ago, if I remember properly. But I'll leave you to have a look at that. Uh, if you're interested. Well, let me get on to sort of the basics of what I want to talk about, which is what it's like to study at UNSW and what you actually do study. Um, we have a, a specific term for what you do. When you, when you come out of a university, you have a degree, right? BSc, BCom, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Commerce, whatever, call it a degree. We also, also refer to them as programs because they're a, they're a sort of a unified structure of courses Right? Units of study, little bits you might do, algebra, calculus, geometry, um, contract law, any of those sorts of things. Okay? A program or degree, to get a degree, what you do is you've got to complete what we refer to as a stream. Now, that's the technical term, but most people will call them just a major. You'll talk about majoring in maths, majoring in botany. Right? That's how do you say that's the degree I'm going to come out with. And it's a coherent set of courses, um, some of which are compulsory, some of which you can make some choices of the core courses which you must do. For example, if you do a maths major, you've got to do at least two first year courses, at least five second year courses. They're all compulsory. And then you've got a choice of, you must do three third year courses, but you've got a choice about them. Right? So those are what we call, to elect it, call electives. And, sometime, and outside that core, the major, you've got to do other um, subjects. Um, and often you'll find there are free electives. A free elective is, the name suggests, any course you like to do. If you fancy learning um, you know, Mexican tap dancing, if such a thing exists, if we have a course for it, you can take it. Right? It's one of your free electives. We refer to courses by size, and we call them, you know, each course is worth a certain, what we call a unit of credit, you will see. Almost every course at UNSW is six units of credit. Now, there's an idea behind that that a unit of credit is supposed to be 25 hours of work. So a six unit course is 150 hours. So that tells you over a 10 week term, for each of the courses you do, you should be spending 11 or 12 hours a week on it. Right? So that's what you do in the classroom and what you do outside the classroom, preparing for tests, writing assignments, writing essays, and all the rest of it. Okay? Each year you're expected to complete 48 units of credit, that's eight courses typically, spread over the three terms. Yeah. So that will tell you, if you're sufficiently quick at the arithmetic, and if I'm sufficiently correct at it, that you're really looking at something like 36 
hours of work on your university studies in a, in a, in a week, okay? at least. Right? You can always do more. That's not a problem. Uh, those eight normal courses you can spread over the three terms as three and three and two, or three and two and three, or three and uh, or two and three and three, whichever you like, whichever is convenient for you. You can even do more. You can do nine courses in a year if you want, and that would enable you to either finish a little quicker, maybe, or to allow yourself in one year to only do seven courses in a year. Right? Or if heaven forfend you fail a course, right, you've got room to repeat it. So a three-year program will be 144 units of credit, all right? uh, 24 courses. Doesn't sound a lot, but there's a, a, a lot in each of these courses typically. A four-year program, 192 units of credit, and so on. Right. Almost any degree, well, I've said here almost any degree, that's perhaps, I'm stretching a point a bit there, perhaps it's perhaps not almost every, but most degrees at University of New South Wales, you compare with another degree and to create what we call a dual degree. So a dual degree, basically, you come up with two qualifications, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Economics, Bachelor of Laws, something like that. Right? Essentially, what you do is you complete what we refer to as the core requirements, the requirements of each degree, and, and throw away all the extra stuff. Right? If necessary, you might have to add up extra courses. Because you can't do a... a, a a three-year degree in less than three in less than the 144 units of credit. Right? That's a, a strict rule. So, for example, the Bachelor of Science, which is the standard science degree, the standard place where you would do maths or stats, that standing alone requires 196 units of, of uh, science, 16 courses, subject to certain rules. Uh, 12 units of non-science, general education. That's one of the features of University of New South Wales. We require you, if you're not doing a dual degree to do courses that are completely out with what you're actually studying, right? to broaden your education, to give you a wider education. That's the point. So um, you know, typically, if you're just doing a Bachelor of Science degree, you might take a couple of commerce courses or a couple of arts courses, or one commerce and one arts, or a law and an arts, if that's available. And then you've got 36 units of what we call free electives. If you did the Bachelor of Commerce, that would be the same thing, except you would not do science, it would be business, so 96 units of business, subject, etc. If you put the two rules together, two dual degree together, the BCom BSC is called, you just do the 96 science, the 96 business, and that's it. That's why when it comes to adding dual degrees together, three plus three is four. You're basically throwing away the extra year of stuff that's, that rounds out your complete degree. Okay, so it's a one four year dual program. And that's one, of, well, that's one of the good things about University of New South Wales, I find, that it's got so many of these dual degrees. So a lot of students do dual degrees. Some of you might be interested in doing our advanced maths degree, and most of our advanced maths students are actually not doing it on its own. They're doing it with something else, commerce, actuarial studies, and so on. I'll talk a bit more about that in the next slide. But I want to also point out the other good thing we have here is this process of, of internal program transfer, which means you can come here, and if you decide to change your mind, you can change to another degree. Not completely freely, right? Certain rules apply. You've got to have done a certain amount of study already and completed a certain amount of study. Uh, you've got to be doing well enough in some cases. If you were in a BCom BSc and you decided, no, I've had enough of commerce, accounting one is just far too boring for me. That's all the commerce I ever want to do in my life. You can just drop the commerce part. Not a problem. All right? If you would go the other way around, you start with a BSc and you think, I'll take a couple of commerce courses, see how I like it. And you think, yeah, this is for me, adding the commerce, well, that's a bit trickier, but it can usually be done. As long as you've done enough commerce and you're doing well enough, you should get through. So you've got that flexibility when you come here. Just because you've arrived to do one degree doesn't mean you have to finish that way. And a lot of students change partway through, typically dropping a dual. If you can get in, by the way, my advice is always is if you can get into the university on a dual degree, do so, because you can, it's easiest to drop the one half if, you're not in, if you find you're not interested in it or you're not doing well enough or for any reason. The point here is you don't have to reapply to UAC to get back into the, to, to change this degree. You can do that, right, if you feel you have to, but you don't have to. <clears throat> so I mentioned advanced degrees. Oh, no, so that's on the next slide after this. This is a selection of some of our courses from um, Terms 1 and 2, 2021. 
did I not have, sorry, I'm just, no, I just lost track of where my, um, of what my, uh, what my slides are ordered. So um, these are some of the courses we offer in terms one and two this year, and I've listed the number of students, so you get some idea of how, how large these courses can be. So math for life sciences, if you're majoring in the life sciences, that's the mathematics course you would normally do, if you, ha if you have to do one. <clears throat> We've got about 250 students doing it in term one this year. Math 113 or math Mathematics 1A, that's the main first year course. That's the course that most students who are doing any subject, any program that requires maths would do. And we had 1,700 people in it in term one. All right. Higher Maths 1A, if you're interested in doing maths, that's the course you're probably doing. We had 570. We have a specialist first year course for those people going into actuarial studies, and you can see 340. So that gives you some idea of how many people, for example, are studying the Bachelor of Actuarial Studies, or the Bachelor of Actuarial Studies in one of its jewels. Discrete maths. Well, I just saw at the end there you were doing a talk on counting problems. That's discrete mathematics. I don't know if Sean told you about that. And discrete maths is where we actually study that sort of thing in more, um, more detail. Other aspects of discrete maths are covered there. Proof theory, graph theory, a bit of set theory, more number theory. But counting problems are very much a part of that course. And then a few higher, um, some of the high years. Several variable calculus. You've done calculus of one variable, I hope, by now. Several variables of what we do in second year. That's a course I actually taught this term, last term. I had 150 students. Statistics. That's the first course you'd meet in statistics, um, 2801. Third year course, optimization and foundations of calculus. I just mentioned those as um, other courses that we offer. The foundations of calculus is one of the courses that's required for a student who wants to go on to be a high school maths teacher. That teaches you, you know, the, the theory behind all the calculus that you might learn at high school. Um, this is a, a GeoGebra. Oh, is that spelled properly? I think I might have spelled that wrong. Applet created by by Daniel Mansfield, I think. Is Daniel still here? He might own up to this. Yeah, this is one of yours from years ago, probably. I probably borrowed this. I don't know if this will still work, but it's an applet to. Um, Let's allow that to allow you to do. Oh, it has when it uh, logs on. So this is just an example of some of the things that we have you, you know, have you to play about with, and various other there are various other things here as well. So this will allow you to, as you can see, estimate the area under a parabola using upper and lower Riemann sums. So this is a, a teaching tool more than anything else to get you used to the idea of what's going on. So I'm just saying that we have these things available for you to, um, you know, created all these sorts of things to help you uh, learn what's going on, to master what's going on. I guess I'll have to do that to go back up. Uh, what's going on here? I've gone beyond me, have I? That's the one. I've found it. It's okay. Right. So as I say, we have a mix of classroom tutorials, online tutorials. Of course, in COVID times, most of our lectures are, in fact, all of our lectures are now online, but we have them, uh, classroom tutors as well as online tutors in first year and higher years, um, and so on. And videos on YouTube as well, plenty of them. That's just a collection. This is from a few years ago. They, they might all have been superseded by now. I didn't get around to checking. Um, all sorts of various problems from second year. There's a second year course there. Oh, that's me, in fact, doing a problem on classifying stationary points. And I think you recognize Daniel with his loud shirts doing a few of these. There's Daniel with a very loud shirt doing a problem on linear dependence. So there's all these sorts of things that we have um, to help you. That, that, that I guess they're still up there somewhere, yeah? Well... Question then, which degree is best for you? You want to come here and you want to do, take a program. As I said, you can come. You can make a guess when you come here and change later. That's one of the, one of the glories of coming to the University of New South Wales. You're not locked in, but um, obviously it's easier to start in the right place. What sort of degree is best for you? Well, I'll just go through a few of the degrees. Some of you have already heard about, I've already mentioned. The, the standard Bachelor of Science, three-year science degree, 
BSC known as program 3970. All our programs have these four digit codes. I don't expect you to remember, we don't expect you to remember them except the one you're doing. It would help if you remembered the program code that you're actually doing, but it's not really necessary. That's as I suggested, a major plus electives plus some this general education, 12 units of credit, two courses completely outside the Faculty of Science, any courses outside the Faculty of Science, almost any course outside the Faculty of Science, I should say. And there are almost, almost th over 30 majors in science, not just mathematics and statistics, um, various life sciences, physics, chemistry, psychology, you know, a, a large number. You can even do, you don't have to do one major, by the way, you can do two majors. You can do the double major, as we call it. So you can do mathematics and statistics if you wanted, mathematics and physics. Okay. Uh, you can do an honours year. That's a, a fourth year. If you do the BSc and, and want to go into honours, you graduate and come back again. It's not difficult. I mean, we don't put any barriers in this. You just have to satisfy the right requirements. Honours year is advanced coursework in mathematics and statistics plus a project, right? So that's an um, individual sort of research. It's not quite cutting-edge research, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it's uh, you know, very recent stuff, and sometimes it's more historical. So that's a thesis worth the same as about three courses. All right. So it gives you an idea of what it is to do. It's meant to give you an idea of what it is to do research in mathematics. Here's a list of a few dual degrees. It's not exhaustive. I mean, I've only listed four here. There are dozens more. BSc, BEDs, what you did if you want, what you would do if you wanted to be a high school maths or science teacher. Um, BCom, BSc, I've already mentioned, Commerce and Science. BSc, LLB, that's Science and Law. The BE, BSc, Engineering and Science, that's actually a five-year degree, because the BE has honours in it as well. Right? Bachelor of Engineering was automatically an honours degree here at New South. Right? Uh, the BEd and the LLB, by the way, are different sorts of degrees. You can't do them except in a payer. You can't do them on their own. I think that's right. Certainly true for the BEd. Um, now, here we, this is where I talk about advanced maths. We have advanced science and advanced mathematics degrees. Now, these are harder, uh, higher entry requirements, and they automatically include an honours year, so they're four-year degrees. You, it's a, sort of a, a, a more coherent collection of problems. Oh, I'm running late, sorry. Um, they're a single degree. They take four years. Our advanced maths program, which is separate from the advanced science, um, you can do math, pure, applied pure or statistics. The advanced science program, you can do mathematics or statistics. They're not called advanced or anything like that. They're just maths or stats. You can do physical oceanography. And there are at least 22 other specializations, or there were the last time I checked. All right. And again, inside advanced science, you can actually do duals. So you can do mathematics and statistics, mathematics and physics. As for duals with advanced maths, as I said earlier, most of our advanced math students actually do dual degrees. And uh, so they would take it with arts, economics, actuarial studies, commerce, computer science. Computer science is actually the most popular of these dual degrees, by the way. Uh, and you can do it with engineering and you can do it with law. I gather you had a couple of talks on data science. We have this Bachelor of Data Science and Decisions degree, relatively new, started in 2017. So the first students just graduated from it last year. It's designed for data science, which you've uh, learned all about. It involves courses from maths and stats, comp sci, and um, economics, which is uh, something that's not the same. Most, most data science degrees across the country would just do, say, maths and economics or maths and computer science. We actually look at the business aspects of it as well. Right? That was a deliberate choice when we created the degree. So in three years, you take a number of fundamental courses in quantitative, that's ours, maths and stats, computational, and business aspects of data science. And you specialize in one of these as well. So you take this group of core courses and the major in quantitative, um, computational, or business data science. There's a dual program for that too. You can do that dually with law. It's the only dual that is available for that at the moment. We're working on others. Um, <coughs> As I said, that's a three-year degree. Uh, finished off with, and this, do, do I mention it here? Yeah, in the final year notice, I say he, you do a course with direct practical applications of data science. That's another key point to it. So you have a first-year course on introduction to data science and the final year course where you actually look at real-life applications of the subject. 
briefly, because I'm almost I'm certainly out of time here, scholarships. Uh, most of this, I think, I'll have to refer you to our website to have a proper look at and all the details. Most of our scholarships are worth about $5,000 a year, and almost all of them are awarded on the basis of academic merit, but there's usually some other requirement as well. There's an indigenous scholarship, as the name suggests, available to an indigenous student. A teacher scholarship awarded to somebody who's going on to do BSc, B.Ed. with mathematics. A rural scholarship, if you happen to have come from a, a rural high school. If you look on our website, it'll give you a, more details on what rural might mean. There are advanced math scholarships awarded to two recipients, chosen one male, one female, um, who begin one of these advanced degrees. There's a scholarship for, <coughs> for data science and decisions as well. Again, awarded one female, uh, one male. Um, some beautiful mind scholarships. Awarded to two recipients based on academic merit. And there are scholarships for people going into honours. There are scholarships attached to... Um, I think there's a scholarship uh, given by one of the people who's um, sponsoring this particular day. I've forgotten the details of that. I'm sorry, I didn't get around to putting it up here. But there's a URL, if you like, for um, the various details. I mean, you can't take in much of that at this sort of talk, but that's why you should be looking at the, uh, the school's website, and that will tell you um, more details. So... That's where you can look at further. Faculty of Science has various scholarships too. The university has various scholarships that don't... I mean, those are the ones I've listed are just for maths and stats. Uh, you can just study them yourself. I think that's the best thing I can suggest to you. Certainly worth a look to see what, it, uh, what is around. And finally, let me say, just I hope we get to see some of you, if not most of you, here at New South Wales Uni in, in the following years. All right, better finish there. All right, thank you. Thank you.